Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that was a trek. But we finally made it. Deep. Deep into the woods. Ooh. Sorcerers and wildlife alike don't always conduct themselves properly here, and I couldn't resist coming to watch it all unfold. So let's see what kind of tomfoolery we can find today and cover conductivity and resistivity along the way. First up, conductivity. In a previous sketch, we introduced conductors as materials that easily allow the movement of electric charges. As we start to talk about electric circuits, it's often necessary to quantify exactly how easily charges or current can flow through a conductor. For that, we have conductivity, a value measured in the units Siemens per meter. The higher the conductivity, the more easily current can flow. To remind you of conductivity, this sorcerer is raising his wand looking very much like a symphony conductor. His spell is ensuring the croaky vocals of these charged up frogs can be heard by the whole forest. This wave easily moving the dapper frogs in their purple plus sign bow ties should remind you that conductivity is a measure of how easily charges can move. There are two main types of conductivity. Electrolytic conductivity, which describes the ability of ions to conduct current in a solution, and metallic conductivity, which describes the ability of free electrons to conduct current in a metal. Now, the better a material conducts current, the less it resists the flow of charges, which brings us to resistivity. Resistivity, denoted by the Greek letter rho and measured in units of ohm meters, is the inverse of conductivity and quantifies how much a material resists or prevents the flow of current. Here, a small row-shaped baby beaver has tried to build a dam of leaves and sticks. But damn, that thing does not look very sturdy. This dam represents a conductor with low resistivity, which allows most of the river current to continue on through. Might not look like much of an accomplishment, but baby beaver is pretty damn proud. And where there's a baby, we're almost certain to find a mama nearby. This much larger row-shaped beaver represents an insulator with higher resistivity. She's built a dam of logs and mud, preventing much of the river current from continuing downstream, much like how materials with high resistivity lessen the flow of current. The local wildlife might not be happy about the reduced water flow, but I don't think mama beaver gives a damn. And speaking of the dams, did you notice how each is made from a different material? That's to remind you that resistivity depends directly on the density of free electrons, which is different for different materials. But the flip side is also true. Resistivity is the same for any two samples of a given material. More simply, this means that any two wires made of the same material have the same resistivity regardless of their shape or size. And before we row our way down the stream, Let's take a minute to introduce one other factor that can affect resistivity. Temperature. As materials heat up, the increase in temperature leads to an increase in the thermal vibrations of its atoms. For most materials, stronger atomic vibrations interrupt the flow of current, resulting in higher resistivity. Here, the open fire next to the bigger row-shaped beaver is to remind you that higher temperatures result in an increase in resistivity. And <laughs> And as that, as that cauldron heats up, there's quite the oh, stink coming from this witch's brew. Ooh. While this witch is brooding makes her look like she's also putting up quite the stink. Or at the very least, she certainly looks like she's going to resist having any fun as she hunches over in the shape of a capital letter R, which stands for resistance. While resistivity is a property of material, resistance is a property of the object made out of that material. In other words, resistance depends not only on resistivity, but also on size and shape. In fact, we can quantify resistance using resistivity, size, and shape with the equation resistance R equals resistivity, rho, times length, L, divided by cross-sectional area, A. To remind you of this equation, our sulking R-shaped witch is standing next to an equal sign trail post. Our row-shaped beaver makes another appearance to represent resistivity, but this time he's on the riverbank chewing on an upright tree trunk, which, along with a fallen trunk, takes the shape of the letter L for length. 
The chewed up end of the fallen trunk is pointed along the riverbank to remind you that length of a resistor is measured along the direction of current flow. Finally, this A-shaped reflection across the river is to remind you of cross-sectional area. The position of this reflection underneath the beaver and tree trunks tells you that rho times the length is divided by area. The larger the cross-sectional area, the larger the number of possible paths a charge can follow, so the lower the resistance. And while we're on the subject of paths, our sorcerer guru has clearly chosen the path of enlightenment. Let's take a moment to listen in. Um. As he meditates nearby the sulking witch, our symbol for resistance, his mantra is to remind you that the unit for resistance is the ohm, while the aura he emits is in the shape of the Greek letter omega, the symbol for the ohm. And while our guru looks like he's pretty comfortable with his surroundings, someone else looks like he's made himself right at home in uh, the middle of the river current. This moose and his zigzag antlers resisting getting out of the way represent a resistor, a common circuit element made of a material with a resistivity intermediate between a conductor and an insulator, through which electric current flows. While resistors are often cylindrical in shape, a circuit diagram simplifies circuit elements and electrical connections into a nice, neat graphical representation. The zigzag shape of the moose's antlers is to remind you of the common symbol for a resistor used in circuit diagrams. While our friendly local moose looks like he'll stay put, he could also charge at any moment, so let's get out of his way and run through some quick review. Conductivity defines how easy it is for charges or current to move through a material. The inverse of conductivity is known as resistivity, which defines how much a material resists the flow of current. Resistivity is a function of the material and the temperature. Conductors have low resistivity, while insulators have high resistivity. As the temperature of most materials increases, so does their resistivity. Resistance, measured in ohms, is a function of both resistivity and the physical dimensions of an object through the equation resistance is equal to resistivity times length divided by area. A resistor is a circuit element often simplified as a zigzag-shaped line in circuit diagrams. Well, it was a pretty uneventful day, all things considered, but looks like Baby Beaver wandered off on his own. I mean... The river be damned. He just can't resist. Hopefully he makes it back to Ohm Sweet Ohm. Wonder what he'll build next. Really amped about that pier. An amp pier. I'm done.